All right, we got a little breaking news here. Jeff uh, in the chat offering for some um, you know live reaction. It's been reported. Uh, Sports Illustrated's Pat Forty right now has the story that Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick will step down in 2024, and we don't even have to go through the admin athletic director carousel because Pete Bavacqua, and I apologies if uh, if I did not pronounce your name correctly. I don't I don't know the chairman of NBC Sports Group, but he is the chairman of NBC the enemy. Sports. <laughs> um, hey, we are we are partners in promoting the Big Ten. All right, that's it. <laughs> That's our uh, that's our cousin uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to Big Ten football. Uh, but he is going to be he is a second generation Notre Dame alum, and uh, he will be taking over as the athletic director. There will be better times than a live reaction to try to summarize everything that Jack Swarbrick has done throughout his tenor, tenure as Notre, Dame, Notre Dame's athletic director. Danny, what's sort of the right off the rip thought when you think about the leadership change there at Notre Dame? A couple things jump out. Uh, one, it's kind of old, uh, out with the old, in with the new. And I think there's no coincidence. It's 2024 when some of these massive changes are coming. That jumps out to me first. And then the other one is what is the new? The new are these TV players. Like, look at the new commissioner of the Big Ten. is Tony Petiti. Look at the backgrounds of George Klyovkov and Bo- uh, Brett Yormauk in the entertainment broadcasting industry. We are a sport that is owned by TV companies. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. that's what college football is in today's landscape. And this is just one more big sign that that's exactly what we are. Yeah. And it's it also kind of gives you an example or an insight into what Notre Dame's athletic director job really is, because you mentioned conference commissioners. This is the athletic director that they're going to for a television executive and the guy who used to you know be running the PGA. So, like, it's not really – the role of the athletic director is changing now, too. It gives you an idea of what's really driving everything at this level. It's it's college football. It's getting the money. It is, you know, having somebody who works with NBC Sports and understands programming and television deals and all that kind of stuff because that's what Notre Dame's new – you know, that's that's the direction they have to go. And if you're Swarbrick, you did a very good job for Notre Dame. I don't think anybody's going to feel too bad about anything that he did for them. They're all pretty happy with it. But now the landscape's changing, and it's going to be interesting to see. Like, it is weird because on the flip side of that, Danny, like you've mentioned, like Kevin Warren did not come from a college athletics background. Petiti does not come from a college athletics background. Brett Yormark does not come from a college athletics background. Klyovkov does not come from a college athletics background. And we have seen Kevin Warren did a TV deal without really clearing things with everybody he's supposed to clear things with. And there's been pushback on that that they're dealing with. We've heard recently that Brett Yormark is talking to schools about joining the Big 12, but he hasn't cleared it with the rest of his conference ADs. And it's just it's like these guys are coming in and they don't really have an understanding of how this works, at least with Bivacqua being at NBC Sports, which has been a partner of Notre Dame for a very long time. And an alum, he has an idea of what how things work in South Bend and how things work in that athletic department. So from that aspect, he might be, you know, he he seems pretty well qualified for the for the gig just on the surface. I mean, that gone also- are the days of the athletic director being an old coach, maybe a former mm-hmm. player, maybe a really nice guy who supported all the women's programs and was going to schedule things and be at every event to support his programs that's gone his or her programs you you just it is a it is a much more of the business savvy negotiating position where and yeah you'll see the athletic director still at the events but that is such a small part of what they're doing now and what it's always been it's just rapidly changed in the last 10 years Um, I hate that I keep coming back to a familiar tune, especially when it's not as impactful on this upcoming season, but it is something that interests me. Uh, Jack Swarbrick was one of four individuals on that initial college football playoff expansion committee. Mm -hmm. That initial group was Greg Sankey, Bob Bowlesby, who was then the commissioner of the Big 12, Craig Thompson from the Mountain West, and Jack Swarbrick. Swarbrick played an integral role in getting us to this current 12-team format he's going to be out. And Tom, you mentioned 2024. This is when we are going to be doing those first years of the expanded playoff and really starting to think about what the next step looks like for the college football playoff. You know, Bulls be gone, Swarbrick gone. All of a sudden, um, I think the idea that we could be looking at even another either expansion or reconfiguration of the college football playoff once we get beyond the 2025 season 
to me, that seems even more likely now that we're going to have some new decision makers in there in that room uh, trying to figure out what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And another aspect, too, you know, Vivac was the head of NBC Sports and working with the PGA, a professional sports league. He's the athletic director of a team in a league which is rapidly professionalizing. And that's probably got something to do with Swarbrick's decision as well. He sees which way the winds are going. And he's probably like, I really don't want to have to do this. This is just not what I'm built for. Oh, Swarbrick just being like, I'm not, I don't want to be the face of paying the players. Yeah. Remember the, uh, the op-ed that they posted like what last year? Oh no, that was like a month ago, right? (laughs) I don't know how long ago it was at this point. Do you guys, uh, I'm going to ask a question. It might rile up some people, but we did have some comments in the chat said, Hey, at least it's owned by TV and it's not the PGA and it's not the Saudis because of what's happened with live golf. If you're paying attention to what the Saudis are trying to do with this massive fund. I mean, it's, I mean, what's it called? Like the fund 2030 the or something like or whatever, that. Yeah. They're trying to spread that money across the globe and to gain access into sports. And apparently, like, apparently they forced their way into golf. Like they just, this was going to happen. Obviously, I don't think a lot of people wanted it to happen. Is it crazy to think that they could find their way into college football? Like, I think it's such a far out idea that if you asked me um, a week ago, I would have said, you're crazy. They'll never do it. But you look, if they really wanted to, I think they could. And I don't, I don't think it's something that just should be completely ignored, ignored. I hope it doesn't, but I mean, look at the PAC 12, they are in a spot of desperation right now. Mm. But the problem is, I don't know how that works with, because it is about TV. How do you get the exposure? It's not just about the money, but if they said we'll fund the players and we'll start paying them. I don't know. I, I don't think it's that far fetched if they had somebody that was keeping an eye. On it. I don't think they're interested in college football, thank goodness, or football because it's not really a global sport. But yeah. I don't think it's that far fetched. I think I think what you hit on just now is the key to it because like I can't rule it out. But if you look at what they have done, like the and this is my very uneducated opinion or viewpoint on this, what they're doing is they're kind of diversifying their portfolio. If you look at where most of the money for Saudi Arabia has been in its history, it's been in oil. The oil futures right now, depending on which way the world is going, we can't really be sure how valuable of a commodity oil is going to be 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. So they are taking, they are diversifying their portfolio and they're expressing, they're expanding globally in other areas to kind of, you know, soft power. Like if you put money in something, you've got say in something. And that way you can exert your will on certain aspects of the world. And if you look at where they've invested, whether it's soccer or now whether it's golf and into like Formula One, these are global sports, sports that are played all around the world. College football is an American sport. I don't know if they're ever really going to get into that because I don't know what gain they really have because they've clearly shown they're willing to burn money as long as it gets them the influence that they want. And I don't know if they would be willing to burn that money on a sport in which they're really not going to be able I mean. Like with helping the Pac-12, what would that really accomplish for them? I I don't know. It would only be as a financial play, where it's the you know the value and everything else is is dropping, and live sports continues to be something that's going up. Danny, I have thought about that a lot in the last like twenty four hours, and what I have feel the strong most um, I feel the strongest about is that American college football will not be like the next thing. You know, we will see an mm-hmm. NBA franchise. Like, I think that basketball could be a spot where we start basketball to see is more that. global. Yeah, and right. basketball just tennis, recently tennis should watch out. Mm-hmm. Um, they I just recently tennis- changed their rules so that sovereign wealth funds can buy ownership in teams. Like that was a recent change. That now all of a sudden, a headline that when you see it the first time, or at least when I see it, I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, it's you know pieces start to fall in line. So, you know, could it come to college? Football, I agree with you, Danny. It could. I just think that there's going to be other steps, you know, before we get to that point. I right. think, you know, I think they're going to try to buy a, a franchise, whether it's NFL or NBA, but you can't really buy a college football franchise. But that's mm-hmm. why I was wondering if they tried to buy a conference, but I don't think that's not possible either. I love some of the suggestions from the chat. <laughs> like, I think like, FSU versus TCU from Dubai, 8 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> I don't know what it'd be. It might be 5 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> hey, Big 12 is announcing its Mexico game. All right. So we're just going to continue to take this thing global. 
to be fair, they had to move the World Cup into the fall because of the weather. College football is already right. in the fall, so we can keep the schedule going as planned. But <laughs> you, you mentioned tennis. I don't know who the governing body is. I can't remember, like the government, but I bet you they're sitting there. They're they're staring at the phone, hoping the Saudis called and will <laughs> invest money in the sport. <laughs> Waiting for the all caps. Do you all another question mm -hmm. about Swarbrick, Bavakwa, NBC? Does this increase the likelihood that Notre Dame would join the Big Ten, or is it neutral? Is it does it impact that at all? I don't know. I mean, I think my I guess, no. yeah, my pure guess is Bavakwa is a Notre Dame alum. He's probably going to be kind of loyal to what the way they've always felt about that but there's also been the speculation this week because like notre dame and miami became aau schools and the big 10 has always had the thing about you need to be an aau school to get into conference and there's so it's people are obviously like oh this is notre dame and miami trying to get into the big 10 which i think the big 10 would gladly take if they actually wanted to come join them but i don't think so i think notre dame is probably pretty happy where it is my cfp anon tinfoil hat says there's no way the former NBC Sports Group chairman is going to sign all of the rights over to the Big Ten and the Big Ten Network, which is owned mm -hmm. by Fox. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. maintaining that Notre Dame NBC Sports relationship, this decision, again, just me being a tinfoil hat guy over here, uh, that, that makes me think it is less likely that Notre Dame signs up to be a full-time Big Ten member. The lesson is global politics, corporate politics, really not that different bailey in the chat says the big 10 will have to bear hug notre dame for them to join a term that i only learned from succession I've never watched Succession. <laughs> bear hug i didn't didn't understand it don't not quite sure if i do but uh but but certainly something to follow